Michael Jordan is not only the best basketball player, but he's the most exciting basketball player to ever play. Tatum fires away, pumps it in, 51 for Jason Tatum. The Big Three NBA Podcast is powered by Prize Picks, the exclusive daily fantasy partner of the CLNS Media Network. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Big Three NBA Podcast. I'm Kwani Lunas. Ashrod Blakely's here. Gary Washburn is here. Hello. How you two doing? Kwani, you know I always going to love you, girl. You know that, right? I appreciate that. You know that, that. right? <laughs> Shout out Gary? to the Whitney Houston. Gary, in case you yeah. didn't listen to R&B back then, Gary, that's a song that Whitney Houston sang. I will always love you. So. I would hope that. in case you didn't know that. <laughs> no, that looked, didn't get like, the that looked like bruh, man. Um from Martin selling those bootleg shirts of Waddy Hutton. You, Damn. You, I'm, really? Kwani, I'm trying you to show some love. Said, he coming with the bootleg. Kwani, really? you saw that. You saw that I episode. I did. <laughs> but it was, it was, fact, it was, though. It was, it was, it was bro man with a wig. That looked like one of them shirts. That was Kwani, so how, you of, how you get one of them? Damn, I want one. That's an original. I'm I mean, so... man had bro man had to do some time for them T-shirts, but he did. He, he was moving those outside the Whitney Houston concert. Clearly. <laughs> I hate Gary. I hate Gary. We're he trying got to some have time. like a Whitney. He did some time, though, but much respect, Dan Kwani, for you to pull that gem out. That's a masterpiece. Why do you have... We're trying to have like a, a Whitney Houston oh, right. moment, of, moment of positivity. I'm sorry. Gary talking about hood, hood rap, bootleg, bro man, I mean, and, you see and, a... and clank, clank. If you say anybody in my generation a, a Whitney Houston t-shirt, you're thinking of Bruh Man and Martin trying to get their hustle on. And Bruh Man got locked up for that, though. Like, you know, pour a little liquor off of Bruh Man. He, he got locked mm-hmm. up for that. Pour one out. A fun fact, I don't know if you two know knew this, but the co-founder or creator of the show, Martin, is from Boston. Went to the John D. O'Brien School of Mathematics. I actually interviewed him a few weeks ago. This is where the plug comes in. But he's a Boston guy through and through. And happened to do that on the side because he had a whole architecture career. Wow. Nice. Right? He's and, like, is that story, has that story run yet, Kwani? Yes, it's on NBC10Boston.com, where Kwani has questions. <laughs> you see that how that play gets? Segue. Gary, that, that's bounce fast layup. Bounce fast layup. That's how yeah. you do. That's how you do. And it was seamless because we did not plan this. We promise no. this is not planned. <laughs> so Gary, <laughs> get, Gary, you need to get you need to get the you need to open the playbook, Gary. Start reading the playbook. This is how we do. Yeah, that's how we do. Bro. That's how we do. You're right. Well done. All right. <laughs> All right. We'll get into the Celtics. Obviously, for those who know, I would hope no one's living under a rock at this point. The Celtics are proving that they are continuing to build upon being one of the best teams in the league. They just beat Milwaukee on Wednesday night. Let's just recap the last seven games. What have you two seen? And what exactly do you think is motivating this run right now? I think they just want to keep getting better and, and just finding ways to win. They're not all that consumed about how it looks or or, or in what capacity it comes. Uh, the one thing I'm starting to see more of, and, and Gary can kind of get into this more because he's, he's around him more than I am, but it seems that they're figuring out ways for anyone and everyone who is on that active roster to play a certain role. And those players are executing that quite well. You know, Sam Hauser, your job is to knock down shots. And the other night, even though he didn't play against the Milwaukee game, but the last time we saw Sam Hauser, he knocked down, what, eight, nine, ten, three, some ridiculous number like that. And we're starting to see Peyton Pritchard be more of just kind of a just kind of a bulldog out there, knocking down shots, being feisty on, on the glass, uh, out rebounding cats like like the Lopez, uh, you know, brother in, in Milwaukee, and just doing all those things that when you're a six foot point guard and you know that your minutes are going to be limited because the guys ahead of you are really good, you got to make an impact. And you start going down the line, and pretty much everyone is figuring out a way to contribute to a team that if the Celtics were to go 500 the rest of the way, their final record would still be among the 10 best ever in franchise history. And this, I don't think this team has had a 14 game stretch where they went 500 all year. So the likelihood of that happening is not great. And particularly, and we'll get into this later, the caliber opponents that they're going to be seeing, you know, uh, on deck, you know, in the next week, week and a half. So uh, I just think that their motivation right now is just to keep playing well, keep, you know, some of those guys at the end of the bench, get them some burn and just make sure once they get to the postseason that they've got all the main core guys as healthy as possible, because in their minds, and I think it's, they should feel this way. 
No one is going to beat them in a best of seven series if they've got their start their core group intact and healthy. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a combination of them just playing well and also playing a, a kind of a softer schedule. Although Milwaukee's good, they beat they beat the brakes off Washington. They beat up on Detroit. Um, you know, they were able to beat Portland and Utah. They were able to get by Phoenix. So ever since that that loss to the Denver Nuggets, they've been on a roll and they played good ball. And I see two wins over the Suns, but also just you know what, capitalizing on kind of a softer schedule, but just also putting it together. Jalen Brown playing the best basketball of his career. I mean, if you look at some of his numbers, uh, you know, in the last month or so, 31 points, 29, 41, 27, 37, 31. I mean, just big numbers. Peyton Pritchard, 13 assists um, in the game against Washington and some big plays in the game went over Milwaukee. And I just think guys are coming up and playing well. You know, um, I think they. Th this is a team that's reacted well to losses. I think that Cleveland loss was a real downer for them. And then they came back and played okay against Denver, not their best game, lost by six. And since then, they've been on a roll. And, and it should continue. I mean, their schedule over the next, you know, Detroit, Chicago, two against Atlanta. They don't face a winning team until uh, another week or so when they play New Orleans. They get Charlotte again, and then another game against Portland, another later on in the season with Charlotte and Washington. So they should be racking up the wins, trying to get to those 65, 66 wins. You know, set records. You know what? Don't wear out your guys. I think guys are getting proper rest. But, hey, make this a special regular season. Make this a memorable regular season where you post some type of record and wins. Obviously, they're not going to – I think the team record is 68 wins. Um, mm, it is the, the 72 73 team, the one that didn't make the yep. finals because John Chow Havlicek got hurt in the playoffs. Uh, but yeah, he set some try to set some records, you know, try to try to do something great. And I think that they're playing good ball. Um, and I think that they could get better too. There's also room for improvement, and all that improvement we've talked about this at nauseum at this point. But the leadership is very important when you think about this team, Joe Missoula. <laughs> self-proclaimed shot blocker he has no, 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 no. made it a point to not let anyone score at the Celtics rim but apparently he was told he can't do this anymore what did y'all uh, Gray? you were on the ground at the beginning of this well at least when we started to really notice it probably had been happening beforehand but what do you think of this saga and why is it apparently gonna end <laughs> Gary what's up with your boy come on <laughs> uh don't ask me about my boy Anyway, um, okay, so, you know, he has a rule. Like, he doesn't want teams to be able get... to shoot mm -hmm. um, after timeouts ever in front of the That's Celtics bench. Now, you know, if you're away in the whole, all down, I mean, across the court, you know, it can happen. You know, Joe probably not going to run out that far. But if you're especially in front of the Celtics bench, right, you're not going to get, uh, you know, get one off without some kind of contest, contest, not contest, contest. So Joe ran out there with Royce O'Neal, and I guess he's been told that, you know, it, it made a lot of headlines that, you know, there's a lot of people, including me, that wrote about it because I just thought it was yeah. unique. You just don't see that. You just don't see Eric Spolster. You don't see Pop. You don't see, you didn't see no Phil Jackson. You didn't see, uh, you know, Sherrod's close buddy, Mike Woodson or Larry Brown, you, you know, you didn't see Red Auerbach running out on the floor and trying to block literally this magic. This is Missoula's thing, trying though. Maybe trying this is the thing. Oscar, trying to block Oscar Robertson's shot after a timeout. You just didn't see it, right? Yes, so for sure. Joe being Joe, we wrote about it, and I guess he was warned, listen, Joe, don't – the Joe being Joe era is over. Um, do not run out there and contest shots – from opposing players, you know, because you don't know. He could get hurt. It could cause some type of issue. You do not want players fighting coaches. You don't want players confronting coaches. So really? just stay off the floor. You're the coach. You're not the player. I get it. You know, it's a little conservative and all that. It's, it was kind of fun. But to me, you know, I, and that's Joe being Joe, and I applaud that. I mean, I think that's part of it, and his players appreciate it, but that's the – 
Joe, everybody knows, and I think everybody's learning. Joe's an unusual guy. He's a bizarre right. person. He's got his ways. I know that better than anybody. Yes, you so, do. <laughs> so, anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, what'd you say last week, Sharon? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Anyway, so uh, to me, uh, it was, the league stepped in. And now he can't do it anymore. I thought that it. was a no fun. I hate it. <laughs> I, I, I hate it. And, and I understand why they don't want him to do it. Because uh, to, to Gary's point, there are some liability concerns. I mean, what if he blocks a player's shot and that player steps on his foot and sprains his ankle and that player is out for like the rest of the game and maybe. Just, so there are liability concerns with that. I get it. But I love the fact that. There's a there's a message that he's trying to send during those timeouts, and that is you ain't getting nothing easy with us. Even during damn timeouts, we ain't taking it. We're not we we're not letting up. Timeout, time in, time over, time over. We ain't letting up. And I love that about Joe Mazzula. I absolutely love that. But then I, I did a little bit of what I like, what we like to call, you know, that hood homework. You know, Gary, it, the, the hood research, research that Gary. Joe Mazzula in, in in his time as a West Virginia Mountaineer had a total of seven block shots. In his career, seven. So the idea of Joe Mazzula being this like wannabe shot blocking dude is like, wait a minute, that's interesting because that doesn't that didn't really that wasn't your thing in college. And for a guard, it's never their thing. But I'm to me, it, it goes back to one thing and one thing only, and that is Joe Mazzula consistently trying to send messages to his players that I got your back, that I and the way that I am is the way that I want you to be a reflection of me out there. I want you to be into the game all the time. I want you to be thinking about what can I do to not allow my, my opponent to get into a rhythm. Because we've, we've all seen this before where guys will go like miss the first seven, eight shots. They get fouled. They go to the free throw line. They make a couple free throws. The next thing you know, they rattle off six, seven, eight buckets in a row. Joe's thinking, you know what? This dude probably hasn't done much all game. This little shot that he may knock down during his timeout, that might be the shot that get that sparks him up. going. So why should I just let him right in front of my bench get into his rhythm? All I got to do is just stand in this and just put a hand up in his face. I get why Joe's doing that. And I love the fact that Joe's doing that. But at the same time, it is a liability concern. And if at the NBA, if you're going to lean one way or the other versus liability concerns versus enjoyable aspects and components of the game, you're going to lean on the side of, of dealing with the liability concerns. And that's why they've told him, chill, Joe, chill. But I don't want, I don't like it. I will, I like seeing that about Joe Mazzula. I like that. Well, we need to free Joe Mazzula because this is ridiculous. Yeah, free Joe me. Free Joe <laughs> Let's Mazzula. start the movement. Gary won't start the movement. I'll start the <laughs> Gary, get that hashtag going, Gary. He's not about it. But no, I agree no. with both of your points. I understand the legal aspect and not wanting someone to get injured. But I do think it's a different edge. It's a different mentality. And, again, I think it's part of his identity as a coach of, yeah, I am going to be very outside of the box with my coaching methods and – to your point, I think that's a, a unique way to look at it. We're protecting the rim, whether it's game time or not. That should be the mentality. Don't let the other team score ever. So, now let me ask um, you this question, though. Let me ask, yeah. I'll throw this out to you. Get both of y'all. What yeah. if a player is doing that? Uh, and we see that happen. We see that yeah. happen all the time. But are you cool with a player doing that instead of Joe? Like, for example, if let's say they call a timeout and Al Horford's on the floor and you see Joel and B try to raise up and Al just block his shot, you cool with that? What would the ref say? I think that that's a good way to pass off the baton because they are on the floor. They are technically supposed to be protecting the rim. Come on, Gary. I mean, granted, the time is called, but Gary, yeah. what do you think? Yeah, um, I mean, I think – Everything that's on the court is on the court. Players and players. Um, Kevin Garnett started that. I mean, and, and he is the father, the grandfather, the forefather of that. Because remember, when he did it 15 years ago, people thought it was petty. When he was blocking shots after the timeout, now everybody does it. But yeah. when Kevin, and I'm going to give this credit to Kevin Garnett because I've seen him do it live and plenty of times. When he blocked the shot, um, and by the way, Kwani, look at the chat. Um, when he when he blocked the shot when he blocked the shots after the timeout, oh this Kevin Garnett being that's why that's so petty. Why he do that? He wanna get in people's heads. That ain't right. That's KG being a jerk. Whatever. Right? Now 
The whole league does it. Five, eight years, whatever after after Kevin Garnett has retired. Every now that's normal. So yeah, if it's on the court with the players, it's all there's no holes barred. But when the coach runs out there, I can understand. Although it's fun. It's fun. It's interesting to write about. It's good material for us. It shows how intense Joe is. I get it. So I don't disagree with him doing it. But then again, what if he goes out there, makes contact, player goes, what are you doing? Did you just touch me? And all mm. of a sudden, you got Patrick Beverly or some fiery player going at That's the guy Green. I was thinking of. That's the guy I was thinking of, Gary, when you're talking about that. It was Patrick Beverly. Yep. Wanda, did you did you look at the chat? Yeah, so we're, I got to send that picture to our producer so those who are watching on YouTube can see the t-shirt that he sent me a picture of. I'm kind of mad that Gary was able to pull that picture up so quick. It was almost like <laughs> like, like, like he went in his file of, of t-shirts that he used to sell back in the day and said, let me pull up one of my classics. I might need to buy one of those. And I'm buying it. one of those. That is a classic shirt. <laughs> Witty Hutton, World Tour. Rick. Jersey Love Legend. Way to go, Kwani, with Breaking out the Witty Hutton World Tour. <laughs> Witty Hutton, yeah, look, we got to love a good Martin reference. Hello, everyone. This is Asia R. Blakely, part of the CLNS Media Network, and I wanted to tell you about one of our friends, Prize Picks. It's the largest DFS, that's Daily Fantasy Sports, platform in North America. It is the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. It's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. You want to play alongside some of Prize Picks' favorite players like rapper Meek Mill or comedian Andrew Schultz? You can now find community plays under the promos tab of the app to view entries from some of the biggest names in the Prize Picks community each week. Prize Picks is really simple to play. You can make your picks, submit your entries, and do this in less than 60 seconds. Yes, that's right, less than 60 seconds. Prize Picks offers weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts like Taco Tuesday. Who doesn't love Taco Tuesday? Every Tuesday, Prize Picks discounts select player projections up to 25% to provide even more value. Prize Picks also offers Apple Pay for quick and easy deposits into your account as we count down these final weeks until the NBA playoffs start. As a longtime fantasy league player myself, Prize Picks is the perfect what's next to satisfy my fantasy league itch. You want in too? Here's what you have to do. First, you gotta go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use the code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. That's right, prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Use the code CLNS for a first deposit match of up to $100. So, that being said, you get a chance to pick more, you can pick less, it's that easy. All right, so looking ahead for the Celtics, upcoming road trip, they're going to be in Detroit and Atlanta. By the way, I'm going to be in Atlanta, y'all. Y'all going to Atlanta? Yeah, but just because, oh, now, there we go. This is the picture. This is the picture. <laughs> the Whitney Hutton World Tour. I hate that Good. Gary has this. You pulled that out real quick. I'm just saying, well it's done, available. Rod. You, well you know done. there was no there was no well, internet Kawhi, search. And this was at Gary's. This was already on Gary's computer. Props to Kawhi for just... breaking it out. <laughs> Who wore it best? <laughs> Who wore it better? Me or the stock image model? <laughs> or or bro, man. Good good bro, man. Like with a oh, bro, man with a wig. <laughs> with a wig for real. Oh, I hate Gary. Boy. I hate Gary. <laughs> I'm just saying, that's what it reminded me of, but way to go, Kwani. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. I love when we get our pop culture references in every yeah. episode, though. You know, it keeps people going, I hope, I think. But I was talking about the road trip. The Celtics are, are about to head on six games on the road. Five of the six of those teams have losing records. What are you two expecting from the Celtics? Sweet. Sleep? Sleep? sleep. Oh, sleep. Extend, extend <laughs> the winning streak to 13 in a row. Oh, did you say sleep? I thought he said sleep, but he meant sleep. <laughs> Both of those, they're gonna get a lot of sleep because they're, they're sleeping. Yeah, they, they, I I don't I don't see them losing any of these games. I, I think the way that there's the games are set out, you you don't have the whole back to back dynamic and in, in play. The teams aren't that good, and frankly, at this point in the season, it's to those teams' benefit to get that ass whipped. 
by the Celtics. They're not thinking about playoffs. They're thinking about lottery. They're thinking about getting as many ping pong balls as possible so that they can get, you know, one of the top picks in a year where there aren't that. This is not a very deep draft. So you really do. Uh, there's greater incentive to be near the very, very bottom so that you can get one of those top three or four prospects coming out this year. So for the Celtics, to me, it's, it's the perfect storm. You're playing bad teams that are going to be worse than they normally are because they're going to be sitting some of their best players because they don't want to win these games. They know that it's in their best interest to lose. And for the Celtics, it's in your best interest to keep on winning. And even though they're they're not in position to finish with the best record ever in franchise history, they're likely going to – this team is going to – most likely finishing the top five in terms of all-time records for a Celtics team. And that, that Celtics team that won a title in 08, I believe they won 66 games. Uh, this team has a chance to do that, uh, ever surpass that, frankly. Uh, and, and that's, again, this is they're, – they're, they're, it's, it's cliche at this point to say that they're really good, but they are. And they're, they've found so many different ways to win that is, it's. I think it's very difficult for you to pinpoint and say, well, if you take this away from them, you can beat them. Uh, if you don't allow them to beat you inside, they got enough guys who can who can just absolutely just, you know, drill you from deep. And if you take away the three point shot, they can play bully ball uh, on a lot of different positions. So, and defensively, they've been pretty steady and constant throughout. And you got Jalen Brown, who is looking more and more like an All NBA defender every single game. That's the one part of his game the last couple of months, you know, has been really good. Uh, better than I expected he'd be to, be, to be candid with you. So there's just not a lot of uh, reason to believe anything other than a six-game sweep is going to happen in these next six games. Yeah. Um, I think it's a tricky trip. Okay, okay you, got, you got Sherrod's favorite team, Sherrod's Pistons coming up. Um you know, coming in, you know, in Detroit. And then you got Chicago. That's a tricky game. The, like, the, Why is that tricky? Because one, it's a back-to-back. Two, the Bulls, you just never know what to a damn expect from them. They trash, you just, though. You really don't. You really don't. Like, you, they, the Celtics should win. But with DeMar DeRozan, Nikola Vucevic, and, and Kobe White, I think, might be back by then. He's been injured. Um, they could, They're capable of anything. And then... The two games against the Hawks, the Hawks are going to make the playoffs. Like, in as much as they don't look like a playoff team, they're going to, they got the 10 spot pretty much clear, c- clinched because Brooklyn is so bad. Brooklyn, Brooklyn had a chance and Toronto had a chance. I said a few weeks ago, I thought Toronto would make a run at that 10 spot, but Toronto got injured and they've just thrown in the towel and Brooklyn is right behind them. So Atlanta, will clinch a playoff spot, even though they don't have Trey Young. We'll see when he comes back. Um, and they'll be in that 9-10 game. It's probably going to be Atlanta and Chicago for that 9-10. That might be the closest thing to being clinched as we speak now because no one's catching Atlanta. And I don't know if Atlanta will catch Chicago, but those teams are going to be 9-10. and 10. The tricky game of the trip, also, Sherrod, is a New Orleans game. The Pelicans yeah. are playing good ball. It's a, you know, Friday night in New Orleans, so it's going to be, uh, sorry, Saturday night Saturday. in New Orleans, so it's going to be a, you know, early game. I think it's a four o'clock local start, so it's going to be, the folks are going to be out, then go head head to Bourbon Street afterwards. So that's going to be a tricky game with Zion, and it was a tough game last time, remember, they played in Boston. And then the Charlotte game, you got to think, uh, the only intrigue there is, you know, uh, the first game against Grant Williams, no, the second game, he, they played him, um when he was in Dallas. Uh, and you got to think you can close that one out. So you, if you like to think five and one at least, but that New Orleans game could be tricky, you know, and as like I said, you, and we also have to consider Sherrod rest. Some of these guys are going to start getting some rest. The Celtics magic number to clinch the East is now three. Okay, so they could clinch it this weekend. Mm-hmm. Three, yep, yeah, that's right. Our number of the day. You don't do that. <laughs> Three is the magic number. Anyway, a um, little bit of social <laughs> shout out there. Um, so what you have is they're going to start resting guys. And you're going to see Jason get a day off. You're going to see Jalen get a day off. Now, you know, you're right, Sherrod. No back-to-backs. You know, will they, re- will they rest guys in Atlanta? Who knows? But I'm sure that they'll be prepared for that. I'm sure they'll want to play full bore against a team like the Pelicans to see what they, you know, the Pelicans have. And so that, I think you got to take all that into account because now 
It's all about rest. It's all about getting guys ready. It's all about putting guys like Porzingis on ice for a minute, making sure he's ready for the playoffs because you don't really need him for the rest of the season. Uh, as I've written before, the Celtics have put in the work already to make sure that the last month of the season has no suspense. In, in many years before, this is the first year I can remember probably in a long, I mean, I can't remember the last time they've clinched this early or had even a chance. So now, usually, the, you know, remember the team a couple of years ago made that crazy push, I think, what, 50, um, where'd they go, 50 and 31 or no, so 31 and 10, whatever they went. Yeah, 30 and 10 or whatever the last 40 games to 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 get to that um, number two seed, the, you know, the team that went to the finals last year. Um, they're the number two seed, uh, you know, so they've never had that number one seed and they've never in a long time since back when they lost to LeBron and those guys. And so they've had, now they have a chance to really shake their team, get rotations, get guys rest, figure some things out. So I think that's what the la this six game road trip could be also be about too, is just like, okay, how does Tillman fit with this guy? How, like, how does this all go down as opposed to like, we're going to just beat the brakes out of everybody. Cause now you got to look at the, the big picture. Yeah. But the thing about them is that the way that they're built and constructed, they can still shut guys down or limit their minutes and still beat you by 30. Uh, yeah. That's the scary thing about this team is that they don't need to have the, they don't need the full arsenal to just blow you out. Uh, and, and if you take, I mean, you could. This team could beat you by thirty points without Tatum and Jalen. And I don't know if there are too many teams where you've got a clear one and two that if you take them out of the equation, the, the rest of the guys that are still around could beat you by by thirty thirty five points. Uh, that's what makes this team so scary, and it makes it to your point, Gary, the importance of good health so vital to their chances of going deep into the playoffs. Because if they're healthy, as even though they've had their problems with Denver. I still would take them over Denver in a best of seven series. Uh, and Denver's a good team, not not trying to disrespect the champs because they absolutely play the way champions do. But I just think the Celtics are a better team over the course of a seven-game series. And if we're being honest and keeping it real about Denver, the fight that Denver's going to have to go through to get to the finals is going to be very different than what the Celtics have to do in the East. I just think the teams in the West are much more closely aligned uh, when you look at Minnesota, you look at Denver, you look at OKC, you look at the Clippers, you've got a number of teams that there really isn't a significant or notable noticeable differentiation between them. In the East, the Celtics are clearly better than Milwaukee, with or without Giannis. They're clearly better than, you know, Cleveland, with or without, you know, Donovan Mitchell. And you start going down the line, they're better than the teams that are likely give them the toughest resistance of getting to the finals. And that, I think there's value in that for the Celtics. And it also, again, it reinforces the fact that the biggest thing for them at this point is keeping guys healthy. Uh, and and your, your guy, you know, Porzingis, that's the guy I worry the most about when it comes to health, not so much because he's injury riddled and things like that, which to some degree he has been, but because when he's healthy, he makes everything and everyone around this team so much better. Uh, he's the mismatch that no one consistently shuts down. He's had a couple games where he's, he's had some problems. Uh, I, I think Bam Adebayo is a guy that can give him some problems. Uh, but for the most part, I like his chances against most bigs in the Eastern Conference. All right, before we close out, we have a second installment of this t segment that I just started called Checking In On Our Exes. Y'all still don't like the name? Come on. It, I think it's good. I'm good with the name, but I'm just I'm, – I'm, I'm looking at Gary, and Gary's got that eh, – but yeah, well, it's not let's... our exes. It's the Celtics' ex. Goodness. I know what you're talking about, Willis. And you know what's about what I'm about to say. But I think it's beautiful. Exactly. I know, you're I know about... Twitter X, whatever you call the social media platform. Amanda and Isaiah Thomas took a photo together in Phoenix. I know, missed them both here in Boston. But here. Isaiah Thomas is back in the NBA. <laughs> Would you look we got at that? Two minutes the other night had an two assist. Minutes. Missed a shot. Uh, I and think we back... spoke this into existence. <laughs> we did. 
We did. We <laughs> absolutely did. I, I'm I'm happy for it. I, I'm I'm really happy for him. He's never going to get that Brinks truck, but at least he's getting the chance to go out on his terms. And I, I think that's part of what the narrative that is being lost in all of this. This is a guy that was literally the last players drafted in his draft class, and those mm -hmm. players, you're lucky to get two minutes, let alone become a two-time All-Star the way he did. And so for him, I think that this is an opportunity to have some closure. I don't know if he's going to play uh, beyond this season. I know he wants to, but if he decides to not play, at least he had one more shot to show what he can do. And if he plays well in, in, in Phoenix, which I think he will, that's good enough for him, I think, at the end of the day, to, to show that he still got it, to show that he still can help teams win games. Uh, it His his story, it, to me, it's just one of the more tragic stories in the NBA. A guy that literally did all the things that you tell young people to do, work hard, stay on your grind, keep trying to get better. When opportunity presents itself, don't blink, don't look the other way. You meet it head on, and then you maximize that opportunity. Uh, you know, people forget that, the only reason he got major burn in Boston was because Marcus Smart got hurt. When Marcus Smart went down, he stepped into that starting lineup and he never left. And he gave them every reason in the world to keep him in that lineup. Not only was he producing in terms of numbers and statistics, but they were winning games. And not only were they winning games, they were winning the hearts of fans in locally and nationally. And so all of a sudden, you're winning games, you're winning lots of attention that you otherwise weren't getting before, and yeah. you're doing it with a guy who is genuinely appreciative of the moment. He didn't come into the league as a top three pick. He he literally came. He look, Gary. You've been in many plenty of clubs. Gary has been to. When they say <laughs> we close, when we say okay, we we gonna, we got enough people in here. We got room for just a couple more people. And you the last one to get into the club before they close it down, so no one else is getting in. That was Isaiah Thomas. He was the last one that got into the NBA club. When he I came. didn't know where that analogy was going, but yeah, okay. Going he was the last right. one to get into the club. <laughs> the club. And you know what? And Kwani, yeah. he has done everything you would want to do in the club. He stood out for all the right reasons in the club. Made his mark. He danced. Times. He bought drinks. He was kind to the server. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Everyone. Exactly. And so now he got, he got another invite to the club. He's back at the club. He back in the club. I love it. I love it. I absolutely love it. Wait, wait. We need to, we need to make sure we're checking in on our exes all the time, Kwani. We we will keep this segment we, up. We need to, we need to keep this By going. Gary's hesitation. Gary, we'll find our exes to check in on. I want to, I want to check in on Shane Larkin. I want to check in on, on my dude. Because uh, Shane is balling overseas. I want to check in on my boy. And Gary Gary knows where I'm going with this next one. Jared Who's my favorite player from Germany? Oh, Daniel Tice. I got that oh. one. Oh. That's my dude. Jonas. Oh. I want actually no, it was he was right though. It was Tice. But I but oh, Jonas is another Tice. one. Jonas is a good one. Yeah. There's a lot of good ones. Yeah, exactly. Maybe we should do I'm we, just gonna yeah, every week I'll find yeah. I like that. I like that. See and then we'll get a dating app to sponsor it. Shout out to all the dating apps that want to sponsor that. See, I know, I'm a genius, this is why, I can't help it. See, Gary, this is why I will always love you, Kwani. There you go. Winnie Houston, right back at you. Look at that. And Move. on that note, we appreciate you guys dealing with and or listening to us here on the Big 3 NBA podcast for Gary Washburn, Eric Sherrod Blakely. I almost messed up your name, Sherrod. And myself, Kwani Lunas. We really appreciate y'all. And hopefully you do tune in next week when we'll be back. We got love for y'all. Except for Gary. <laughs>